This year marks the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi's birth in 1869. On this solemn occasion, I'm thankful for this opportunity to briefly pay my personal homage to him. Mahatma Gandhi continues to inspire the world with his guiding legacy as the preeminent champion of peace, freedom, and justice. I remember with great privilege and honor that as part of the commemoration of the 150th anniversary of Gandhi's birth, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and myself attended the unveiling ceremony of Gandhi's bust on February 21st of this year at the campus of Yonsei University, Korea. Looking back, my very first overseas post as a Korean Foreign Service officer was to India in the 1970s. During that tour, I first paid tribute to Gandhi at the Razgat in 1972. Later, I revisited the Razgat when I was the United Nations Secretary General. In 2007, the United Nations General Assembly declared Gandhi's birthday, October 2nd, as the International Day of Nonviolence. With this legacy and living memory in mind, I had the honor to preside over the very first observance of the United Nations International Day of Nonviolence on October 2nd, 2007. I also know that in 1999, the New York Times selected Gandhi's nonviolent resistance campaign against the British colonial rule as the best revolution of the past 1,000 years. Last year, I was honored to serve as one of the members of the Committee for the Commemoration of Mahatma Gandhi's 150th anniversary. As the eighth United Nations Secretary General, I believe that the United Nations has been succeeding and shall continue to succeed in reinforcing and expanding Gandhi's philosophy and vision through the United Nations three driving pillars, namely international peace and security, human rights and development. Furthermore, we human beings should keep in mind and implement Gandhi's views on religious tolerance. In particular, countering and preventing violent extremism requires tolerant attitudes towards other religions. Before concluding my message, I'd like to stress the far-reaching description of Gandhi's seven sins as follows. Politics without principles, wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without morality, science without humanity, and worship without sacrifice. This universal message, which continues to cross oceans and transcend borders today, has anchored my understanding of how I view the wider world and the inherent interconnectedness of humanity for decades now. It is my great hope that the uni universality of Gandhi's resonant words, as well as his emphasis on building peace, promoting nonviolence, forging harmonious relations between diverse communities, living sustainably, and upholding the dignity of all continues to inspire countless others for the next 150 years and beyond. Thank you for your attention.